I probably should have waited to do this, but after we go through these five things, maybe you won't make the same mistake. What's going on YouTube? H-Dub here, and you know we playing Raid. Today we're gonna be talking about arena bonuses and the live crest that you, you know, receive from completing live arena battles. Let's talk about the crest briefly and five things that every player should think about before choosing to spin their crest. Now, as you all know, these crests could be obtained from winning live arena battles in a particular tier. This is similar to the system, you know, that works for classic arena and, you know, tag team arena. It's the exact same thing. So we're pretty used to how this system works. Obviously, you know, the higher the tier you're in, then the more medals you're going to receive. I think we're all pretty familiar with how this works. If you've ever leveled anything in the Great Hall or bought something in the Bazaar, then you know what to expect. I know, you know, you already knew this, but I said it anyway. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't at least consider the things that I'm about to mention. First, Live Arena can take a considerable amount of time, and depending on what your schedule is like, you may have more or less time to compete. This is probably the thing that has influenced people's feelings about Live Arena the most. The fact that it is not active for, you know, players to participate whenever they can and whenever they're available is just a bit weird, and honestly, I'm not sure why they made it that way. Hopefully, this changes in the future. Your ability to even be available for live arena, let alone spend time in like long drawn out fights, picking champions, waiting on somebody else to like pick their champions is like, it's crazy, right? To get enough crest to start even upgrading arena bonuses, well, these area bonuses, sorry, means you have to be very strategic about the bonuses you, you know, you choose to upgrade. Like you should be strategic about this because it's going to take you a considerable amount of time to get them once you choose one you don't get the medals back either so this is all the more reason to just hold on to them until you've given it some thought second because we're able to get cvc points from upgrading great hall bonuses this leads me to believe that at some point we're gonna get you know cvc points for upgrading the area bonuses as well now, CVC, you know, Great Hall points were nerfed, but it's still points nonetheless. And if you're someone who needs all the points that you can get, then you're definitely going to want to hold on to your crest. There's no rush to really use them. I'm not saying you have to do this, but it'll definitely help you as far as like discipline and mindset goes when playing this game. I feel like because they starve us of so many resources, it just sometimes gets real easy to start using them as soon as we get them. Trust me, I am guilty of this myself. Third, if you take a look at the actual areas, right, that we are able to upgrade, there are some that are going to be very enticing. And there are some that are going to, you know, you're going to look at them and say, why is this even here? Right. This is where we're going to have to take a good look at our account as individuals and say, do I really need this? Or can my gear and the options that I have as far as champions goes get me, you know, get it done for me already? Unless they plan to add extra levels to the potion keeps, I am really not sure why this is here. Maybe they do have some plans they haven't told us about, but this is just like really weird. This is a really weird addition considering there are dungeons missing from here. Most free to play accounts can like farm the higher levels of the potion keeps within a few weeks, you know, or less without any issue. So it's, it's just weird. They have all of the dungeons individually set for upgrading. And obviously we have the Hydra boss and the Demon Lord, you know, really quickly. I just want to say dungeons, they should definitely be like packaged together again. I don't know why they did this, but. Yeah, we all know why they did this. But really think about your account and, you know, what you can accomplish before you start upgrading these things, right? So I've already, 
you know, started upgrading them and I, I didn't, you know, consider at first, maybe I should have taken like accuracy and resist for Hydra. Ignore defense is good, right? Speed is, is great, of course, but I feel like if I just took accuracy and resist, I could potentially get these things over here from my gear already. Now, in the early and the mid game, it might seem reasonable to start upgrading the Demon Lore area bonuses, right? But the truth is this content can be very easily completed, you know, with time and efficiency. All you have to do is just be patient, you know, keep building up your champions, keep farming for gear because there are hundreds of combinations of you know teams that are able you know to get this done already is it's no sweat the dungeons may also seem very enticing but like i said much of this content is already able to be completed without these bonuses obviously champion options are going to come into play because you're going to say you know h dub i don't have the meta champs to you know do the dungeons at the highest stages and i'm going to be honest with you Depending on the level of your gear, these area bonuses aren't going to make a significant difference. Now, if you aren't able to do the hard mode dungeons, that is fine. Farm 20 or 25 or, you know, whatever you're able to complete until you either have the gear or the champions to progress further. You know, like I said, all of this content has already been completed before the addition of these area bonuses you know this is not to say it won't help your current comp in any way but your current comps are fine if they work with a high win rate if you've already been farming with them there's no need to rush into you know upgrading these things if you've already been farming with your comp just set it and forget it you do not have to watch it run fourth fourth is going to be the areas that I feel like are going to be most beneficial for people to start upgrading. Um, you know, these are just the ones that, you know, I have thought to start upgrading myself for my account, but I feel like I did take a little bit of time to think about it. I didn't take any time to think about saving my crest though. Hydra is definitely going to be number one for me, seeing as though you need 18 different champions to complete the different levels. I don't have all of the meta Hydra champions, so I'm going with Hydra. I'm pretty sure most people in the player base do not have, you know, 18 crazy champions for Hydra. I know this because I'm one of those people. After that, I would say is the dungeon that you want to push higher the most. Dragon is going to be pretty easy. Even at stage 10 hard, it's like not that crazy. And there are so many combinations of champions you can use to complete it. It's really going to come down to the gear that you have. I feel like, you know, these area bonuses aren't going to make a, a huge difference unless you could like upgrade it to level 10, which is going to require you to get to gold, the gold stage in live arena. Obviously, on normal modes, you know, dragon is the easiest dungeon to complete and will probably be one of the last things that people touch before you know they touch potion keeps fire knight is probably going to be next because fire knight is one of the harder dungeons even on the normal mode you know fire knight is one of the harder dungeons to complete i'm sure the majority of the player base in the early and mid game do not have a fast team for 20 nor a reliable team for 25 it gives really good gear so it's definitely an easy pick for sure next i would say is clan boss now depending on where you are in the game upgrading some of the clan boss bonuses is going to be the difference between you moving from a three key to a two key to a one key ultra nightmare in game players probably won't touch this at all unless they want to go for some sort of like crazy ridiculous damage record or experiment with different comps all of this is going to be account dependent, of course. So use this with your own discretion. As far as these particular stats goes, you know, with these different area bonuses, ignore defense, you know, speed, accuracy may be the most beneficial stats to start working on first. Depending on the area and what champions you use in your comp, attack, HP, and defense, I would say are secondary stats to try to upgrade. 
The more accuracy and resist you can get from area bonuses, the less you're going to need from gear as well. So leveling up accuracy and resist for Hydra could really change the dynamics of your comp because instead of taking an accuracy or resist chest piece or, you know, banner, now you're able to take HP percentage, attack percentage, or defense percentage, or flat attack, flat HP, flat defense for banner, of course, allowing you to just have a better build overall. There'll be, a, you know, maybe a little more tanky, maybe a nuker may hit a little bit harder, but you'll be getting accuracy and resist from the area bonus and that's just something to consider. Now, fifth is going to be the areas that you may want to stay away from. And I haven't thought of too many, but briefly, I do have a couple to talk about. If you start upgrading things like speed and, you know, crit damage and clan boss, it could definitely mess up your team a bit. Similarly to how if you upgrade, you know, your your faction guardian, depending on the champions that you have in your faction guardian, upgrading speed and any one of these, you know, faction guardians, if you max it could definitely mess up your comp, right? If it is a speed tune comp. Now crit damage, I only say crit damage because if you are running, you know, an ally protection comp, ally protection scales from crit damage and you do not want your ally protection champion to be taking more damage because now they have more crit damage on them, right? So definitely something that you want to be aware of so that your comps don't start to fall apart. The next one is going to be in the ice golem. If you in fact get around to upgrading things in the ice golem, and this is going to be something that educated potato actually, you know, pointed out to me, which I think was a great tip. Ignore defense and the ice golem you may want to stay away from just because you know you don't want to be doing that much damage to the boss or you're going to proc his passive and he's going to start smacking. So definitely want to stay away from that one. Shout out to Educated Potato for, you know, pointing that out to me. Kudos to him. Go follow his channel. Again, I don't know why Iron Twins and Sand Devil are, you know, missing from these area bonuses. Hopefully they do add them at some point. It's honestly crazy to me, but that's going to be all for this one, guys. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to, to support and watch. Hopefully this helps you out when thinking about area bonuses. And don't forget to see what you can accomplish before upgrading. But that's all for me, guys. I've been HWZ. Until next time, be good and be well.